everybody, it's Colette Baron reed Yay, we're here again, I'm so excited. It's my weekly reading, my offering for you, um, where you guys have all sent in, and by the way, you have sent in hundreds of requests for a quick reading. I'm going to read it to you personally, I'm gonna choose you, and then I'm going to describe it as it would potentially affect all of us universally. Today we also have a very special guest. I'm doing the forecast for the universal energies that I'm going to read from my oracle, the enchanted map, and I have intuitive strategist and archetypal astrologer, the hot Robert Ohato, who's here to talk to us as well about the week upcoming. So first, let me tell you the reading that I picked. Um, this really jumped out at me, and so I chose uh, Emmanuel's question, which is, if you have the opportunity to help me become who I am in a world that is constantly trying to make me something I am not, would you do that and how? So how will be, I'm gonna pick an oracle card for you. That's the easiest thing I could do right now. Oh, ha, ha, and so here's what this is. This says, heal the ouch, so true. Right now, you cannot see yourself in conflict, opposition, and um, this, the victim of other people's manipulations or desires for you that you don't want. That's the also a step you need to take. Take a look at this, get detached, get a different perspective. You are not a victim of the world's expectations of you you are repeating and reinforcing the expectation that you'll be in conflict. Choose who you are. You make that choice. And the other piece that I want to talk about is the fact that the outer world reflects what we expect and believe. So that's something also to take a look at. Why is it that you expect that the world is constantly going to be in conflict or opposition to you or to who you need to be, or that other people will try to manipulate you to be something different? Or is this cultural for you? Is it familial? These are the kind of things that you need to look at if you're gonna make changes. The subconscious mind is something that is programmed by the past. In the course I'm teaching right now, the Envision uh, Process Training, um, we talk a lot about in there about how to detach, how to see yourself from a position of observation. Detached observation is so crucial right now to be able to um, get out of that emotional uh, conflict that you have by this. Um, be as detached as you can, be observant. I would really like to suggest you watch those three free videos that I have for my Envision Process Training class. You'll get a lot of answers there as well about how you can get your breakthrough because what you need right now is a different perspective and you need some detached observation and that's how I can help you. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here we come with Robert. I'm so excited. Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to my weekly forecast for the universal energies that are affecting all of us, this umbrella of evolution that's happening to all of us right now. It's a big week coming up, which is the week of April the 21st. So um, I've invited somebody very special to join us today. Uh, nobody does astrology like Robert Ohado. He's gonna come in Ohado style and, uh, and really give us some deeper insights to hopefully, hopefully what he says is gonna be in alignment with what I I say because I've really been testing out my ability to do these accurate forecasts with my oracle cards. I've meditated, I've done all my stuff, and I've chosen three cards off the top of the deck today, and I'm going to tell, tell you all what it is, and then we're going to talk to Robert and see what he says. So um, the three cards that came to me from the oracle, and this is the enchanted map oracle cards, they tend to be conflicting a little bit and uh, because the first card is protecting treasure and then it moves into coming to life, but then it kind of requires us to, to stay in the now, stay so powerfully present, which is part of the evolution. So it's, it's movement and yet not movement again. So we begin with protecting treasure and protecting treasure is card 39. And what that means is, is that it's time for us to really take a look at the essential elements that we want to continue on with. We have to know what we are ready to discard and we have to know what we need to protect. And so, and when I say protect, it doesn't mean to assume that there is any quote unquote attack. It, but it does mean that we are going through an ultimate restructuring and a realignment somehow. And so we're going to actually feel the need to be self-protective as well and a little bit cocoon-like this week. 
But at the same time, we're honoring the card of 29, which is coming to life, which is fascinating that this is like a Pygmalion card where this lively uh, being comes out of a statue of stone. And uh, so it's the mineral that becomes animated. And, uh, and so a lot of our, our collective experience, our collective dream is coming true. We are expected to go through a, a change. We cannot remain in that state of stasis, that mineralized state. We are coming to life, but the card shows it's half and half. It's half one way and half another way. So it's, um, it's, we're not there yet. It's really more of a herald of this evolutionary experience and it's not going to be comfortable, but it's still exhilarating at the same time. So protecting ourselves while we're anticipating and experiencing this shift, some of us won't know what, you know, how that's going to go, which is the way it is. And interesting what it warns us on because the ghost lands, which is the last card, tells us that if we are overly ambitious for the future and get too exhilarated by these changes and think we have it all down, we know exactly where we're going to go, and we forget that the now is where the seed is planted and germinating and life is coming now, or we get nostalgic for the past, or we, we come up with resentments because we didn't get what we wanted, or you know we're, we're past focused. We are memory-based creatures. Our subconscious is programmed to repeat the past. So, so two warnings, the past and the future are not ours right now. We must stay still in the moment as present as we can and there is genius and magic there. And so I hope the astrology piece is going to somehow underline that what the oracle of the Enchanted Map says. And if it doesn't, well, then I'll have to go back to the drawing board and come up with something new to do every week. So, Robert, welcome. And what do you have to say about this? Hey, it's great to be on your uh, little video here. Um, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I was smiling as you were talking because we really are at a, I'm going to call it a crossroads meltdown point because we've been building through the cycles going on right now toward this new unknown uh, expansion of self. And a lot of what you were saying is true. Mars is retrograde right now and there's an energy that's going on that's causing us to feel like it is going forward but also things are being pulled back and in that friction we're being forced to reevaluate what really is the most essential that needs to stay be fortified and become foundational and what isn't functional working anymore. Right. And I've been feeling like this next week, especially I'd actually talked about this in some of my own work, is very crucial as we move from the 22nd forward for a week because we're coming to a culmination point both individually and collectively and that culmination point is all about how do you start to move forward in a rebel to revolution in your life. So you've got to rebel against what isn't working anymore, but it's not just about that, it's about finding what will. So it's that balancing point, and in that balancing point, there's at this crossroads, I'm seeing that there's a meltdown, mm -hmm. which is, meltdowns are always about a, a system collapsing, something that's not working anymore, just mm -hmm. finally collapsing, and, and it's not tenable anymore, and we have to find something else that's going to work. And it deals with esteem and relationships, mm -hmm. and it deals with uh, Mars is retrograde in Libra, so this deals a lot with uh, how we assert ourselves and get our needs met, and even claim what needs are. I think we're, most of us are so ashamed of even having any needs. Mm -hmm. So it's how do we move forward uh, and have needs be needy, and that be a good thing, mm -hmm. and get those needs met in affirming ways, and yet it's not about making it a narcissistic journey either because right. Libra is about relationship and it's about consideration of the other but still not giving away your Mars which is your will and it's your capacity to assert yourself um, in healthy ways and the thing that I've come up with is it's, it's about being a love rebel. So right, I love that. The, the whole rebellion is about connection. It's about, you know, I have to connect to me if it, you know, I've got to connect to me before I can connect to you and the, the degree that I can connect to me in my esteem, in my af uh, sense of affirmation is going to de determine the quality of intimacy that we're going to have together and I can share in with you. So there's this whole movement. Let me ask you a question is, with this. Yeah. So if we were to kind of compare what you just said, so would protecting treasure then um, be about 
uh, you know, recognizing that there is this revolution, that have, rebelling against what doesn't work. Remember, I started by saying, you know, we have to hone in on what does work. The idea of shame, we feel like we need to protect ourselves a little bit when we're asking for our needs to be met. And the fact that that second card, which was coming to life, was it's not fully done, right? Yeah. So it's half half mineral, half animation, right? There's half life, half mineral, half stasis, half movement which is like the Mars retrograde, but still yeah. it's coming to life regardless. And then the ghost lands being um, about the need to stay present to the process of that need and that reaching out. Would you say that's true? Yeah, and, and what I'd sum it as is a choice point. So, but right. the choice point, we think usually in choice points if we choose one thing over another, but this choice point is with the ghost lands that you're talking about. Yeah. It's like, this is what I know doesn't work, so we know we're not choosing that anymore. Right. But the choice is, I'm choosing now the unknown. Right. The unknown. the unknown. And when and, people and reach... You don't really know what you're doing. So, and, and, and that's, that's the thing. Most of us in this culture, are, we're taught we got to know what the next choice is. Sometimes the choice is, you know what, the choice is just the unknown, period. Right. And that's what I think this shift is about. So, the meltdown is... A meltdown of what isn't working. So when those those listening that are going to go through meltdowns this next week, or that are actually already going through them, I've seen this yeah. with my own clients. Everyone's melting down. People are going, <laughs> and that's the that's what the ghost lands. Like, well, okay, this is done. This is done. And, and we, don't you find too when people are craving certainty, when things are changing, when we feel like we have no control over those things, is people crave certainty. So it's so it tends to be that people will cling on to the past, um, even you know, even if those past things don't work. They're looking at it, going, "Oh, but it's familiar. It's familiar." That's or right. they're looking forward too far into the future, saying, "Well, now I can be really ambitious and move forward." And yeah. like the hell with the present. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing that happens, Colette, is people make goals out of the old self that's trying right. to die off. off. So that's why you have to have the unknown as the choice because you don't know this system of self yet. You don't know what it's going to be like to live in esteem and to live in ways that, yeah, you can have a boundary and tell someone to F off and still have love in your heart. I mean, you right. don't know what it's going to be like to be a love rebel. So there's the need to step first into, I'm just going to choose the unknown and, and, and as you said, be in the now because that's where you figure it out. You don't figure it out in the future from an old self. That's a time warp. So, right. you know, yeah, I mean, you were spot on. Oh, all let's choose cards. one more card then and see if we'll say like, what would we all need to know collectively to help ourselves individually move through this change? So I'm just going to, you tell me I, when to stop. You just say which my hands are itchy on these cards. <laughs> yeah. Well, say I when. Think... Say say stop. I got the cards. Okay. Stop. Okay. Uh, let's see. Robert's card is home. Oh, that's so cool. It's finding finding home inside your own skin. Yeah, and home is being redefined. <laughs> redefining home. It's and... an archetype. It's being redefined because home means a lot of things now. It, does, it And it's more about that internal sense. You know, people that have learned how to parent themselves inside can go anywhere in the world and right. feel at home. So it's about, all right, how do I stay connected to myself no matter what, and when, what do I do when chaos, because these are chaotic energies mm -hmm. coming up right now. Chaos is the genesis of everything new, right? But right. at the same time, chaos is an invitation to disconnect from yourself or leave home. Right. So I think this is about how do you stay connected to self and at the same time, no matter what. You know, here I'm in the unknowns, but I know what's true. I'm staying connected to me. I'm staying connected to me. I'm coming back to me. And that's where you get guided. So, you know, this is where you're going to figure it out. We're not going to figure it out. And this is what we, this is just how we operate from the mind all the time in this culture. We think it's all up here. Mm -hmm. when this is a bullshitter. You got to get out of that and start to move down into, all right, what's going to actually figure this next step? And it's not this, because this is what's been conditioned by the past and the trauma. And, you know, we all spin up there. You all right. know what that feels like, right? So when we drop in, then we get the next step and it's going to come from some other guidance in yourself that's not going to be mentalized and mm -hmm. analyzed, but it's going to be, well, I'm just going to breathe and take the next step into the unknown and figure it out as I go and give myself, everyone needs to give themselves permission to be experimental yeah. and, and to not know what they're doing. Really, I love that. 
I always yes. say, stay curious right now. This is a yeah. week of remaining yeah. curious, but recognizing that you're you're vulnerable. I think the protecting treasure piece is about vulnerability. One of the things that you said that I think applies to every single person right now, and I was just writing about that this weekend, was about finding a new home, a new definition of home in your own skin. I really do think all of us are becoming like orphans. You know, we can't look to external groups and structures, etc., to call home. And I realize that I now belong to myself, therefore I can belong anywhere. This idea of home, belonging, where do we live, um, you know, in our consciousness, you know, that, that's yeah. so crucial right now. And I, I know that that's what's being initiated right now for all of us. And, and making home in the now. In the now. That's, that's the home. That, yeah. And it always has been. I think we just got seduced into thinking into promised land concepts of home. Yeah. And really home is wherever you are, there's home. And how would it be to live that way? Like well, how, what would it be like if you lived from that place of well, where this is home? <laughs> well, you know what? That's, that'll be home. <laughs> you, know? you and me both know, and we've paid it. We've 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 really earned our place in our seats because we both have been through this initiation, and we both know individually together. We've talked about this, and and I think we're all in for an exciting ride. So I want to thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm so oh, excited to share this fun. with everybody. Mwah, I love you, Robert. Oh, love you. Bye. Okay. So you guys are going to come with me. I'm going to pick up my new motorcycle parts that were beautifully painted by this award-winning artist. Um, after my accident, I was too scared to ride and I decided, you know what, I'm going to get over my fear and make the decision not to ride, not because I was afraid, but because I realized it wasn't for me. But then what happened was is that I started riding again and after about, I don't know, six weeks, I realized I love this. So. I'm going to invite you to be the first to see this commemorative body of work that is so meaningful to me. See you in a minute. Hello. Welcome. No, Here it. we go, everybody. I haven't seen it yet either. You're going to all be part of this unveiling of my awesome motorcycle. There's a couple bad pictures before, but okay. now you can see the color for real. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Just, that is gorgeous! Like it. <laughs> oh. Get behind it, Cullet. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's just like the color of the ocean where we were. Oh my god! <laughs> Very different in person. Oh, it's gorgeous! Oh, wow! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's so gorgeous! You like? Oh, I love it! Look what you did! Oh my god, it's like the, it's like the sky and... Oh wow, this is so cool. This is gorgeous. Gorgeous! This is the color I was hoping it was. Oh my god, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> now in the sun it's going to come up, you know, about a hundred times more. Oh my goodness. Oh, and there's the gold sparkles for feng shui. Okay. Oh yes, look at that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, out, yeah outside in the natural sunlight where it's bright, it's going to really, really pop. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at how the color goes. <gasps> Oh wow, and look at how see that's going to look. It's going to look like 3D. Yeah, see how the wings shift in and out from the white? Yes. Oh, and the moon. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Everything that's shifts. stunning. Do you see the moon? I have a moon! <laughs> so you're all the very first to see my special, spectacular raven bike. So the ravens and the full moon represent intuition and magic and synchronicity. And we have the present moon on the back, and we have the sky blue or the ocean blue. I mean, I've never seen a blue this gorgeous. You are not going to be able to see this color in this video. But uh, I don't know how to show it to you. It's just so amazing. <laughs> okay, next time you see me, you're going to see me on the bike.
Your eyes are like the sea as it reflects the summer sky You know I remember sailing there in some other life In the ocean I'll swim till the end of time You know that fate has got her own ideas No matter what we plan I know she weaves a spell around me When I am touching, touching your hand I'm touching your hand So can you feel it? Tell me I need to know Do you remember? Don't it feel like coming home?